Brandini. Brandon. Hello. How, how have you been? It's been a minute. It's literally been a long time since I've t- seen you. Probably like two weeks since we've talked on the phone. A few texts the... here and there. When did we talk on the well, phone? Well, for two. If we're talking like this, this is on the phone, is it not? Is this not a version? This is not a phone. This is a computer. (laughs) Stupid. 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 Wait, Um, it was even longer, right? Because you didn't see Spider-Verse with us. No, I didn't see Spider-Verse with you. I think the last time I saw it. Was the last time I saw you Guardians 3? No way. No, it was after that. I think I saw you like the week before Spider-Verse came out. I want to see. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What, what have you been up to? What have you been doing? How's uh, nuts? A lot. How's, how are the coasters? It's there? it's good. The coasters are good. Um, You know, we've had issues recently at the log ride. Don't want to get into it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Why? Uh, is it like, is it sensitive? Listening. I guess. I mean, if people get hurt, I like, I don't know. But, uh. Did someone get hurt? Did anyway. someone dive into the river to chase after their phone again? Oh, you're not going to spill? All right. <laughs> I'm not going to spill tea. But, Fine. You know, uh, that's good. Um, but mostly I've been, been trying to catch up on my movies, you know, catch up on movies that I own that I haven't seen or that I have acquired from, like, my years of purchasing. So I have about 30 left from my, like, personal, like, I bought this collection. Oh, of yeah. stuff to watch and then the rest are like it's all like the stuff i've inherited like from oh. family members who passed away your nepo collection and such. my my the nepo <laughs> part nepo, of my collection like the those... nepo part of your movie collection <laughs> it's like that's right 150 or something titles and i'm like oh. jesus and i don't and i don't even like know like much of them like i'm like <laughs> what's, like, what's I'm that like... one movie you watched it was like uh you're like, what that? Why do I own this? It was like this yeah. dumb comedy that you hated. What was it called? It's called What's the Worst Thing That Could Happen? It stars <laughs> Martin <right>. Lawrence <laughs> and <laughs> Martin yeah, Lawrence and Danny DeVito. And oh it's like God. about this guy who steals a ring, but it's got like the tone of like those like early 2000s, like Big Mama's House movies. And I'm not just saying that because Martin Lawrence is it. I'm just, it's just a similar energy. Yeah. But yeah, I've been trying to do that. Um, uh, e- Evelyn and I have been going out a lot recently. Uh, you went we, golfing I met this her, morning, I saw. We we went golfing. It's a driving okay. range. We went to, um, uh, I met her family. We had dinner together. That was fun. Yeah, uh, that's it. I'm gonna put in applause the... for that. That's a big. Fi- that's a big win for the stacked Ooh. audience. Uh, We've all been rooting for we that to the... happen. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the batting cages, and we're, we're going bat? to Arizona in two weeks. Oh yeah, that's right. Your big trip to Arizona. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. So... That's gonna be super fun, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, without further ado, I think I you know I just want to take some time to catch up with my buddy Brandon and see him more, but. Today is a very special episode of Stacked. Um, of course, Chris is not with us this episode. Um, he's, still, he's still dead. Um, he recently <laughs> got into a submarine um, <laughs> to see the... No, you can't say that. I'm not going to go there. Sorry, They're people. dead, uh, bro. They're all dead. They are dead. Um, my condolences to the billionaires who died at the bottom of the ocean. Um, and but the what about those uh, 600... Uh, immigrants that are lost on that boat no one's talking about that just gonna say that um I just anyways saw that. yeah see that's what's fucked up about our news these days that's why i only read elf news that's a that's a <laughs> reference for people only listen to j and d and stacked which is probably like one or two people um okay anyways uh so chris isn't here he's still living it up in bali and hong kong just all over the place um so we got a very special guest. I've wanted to have him on for a while because he's one of the only Twitter mutuals I have who I feel like captures the the spirit of being a, a movie enthusiast. And he's also the on, one of the only other coaster enthusiasts I know besides Mr. Brandini. Um, in fact, he owns he owns a very a very successful YouTube channel about Florida theme parks. It is our very special guest. Welcome to the show. Hello, Mario. 
Hello, Mario. Oh, hello. Mario. <laughs> Mario. I get, I get a little stack. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll guess I've heard get a hello, Mario. stack chain. Um. Okay, Mario, I gotta, I gotta ask you about the origins of your name. Because I've always been so curious. Is your name a reference? Do you know that one video about Mario and Luigi talking yes. about drugs? Yes, I know it. <laughs> Is that is that what it um, is? No, because Luigi goes, H- Luigi goes, hello Mario, and so whenever I read your name, I go, hello Mario. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I I I originally had like a username that actually like kind of meant something. Like uh, I, when I was a Geometry Dash YouTube channel, my um, username was Paco One Five Eight, and Paco was like this character I made when I was in like elementary school. That was just like. Do you know the show Ubi where you have like a, uh, it's like a hand guy. Uh, it was pretty much that. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, so, so <laughs> that's that was my, so cool. that was my character Paco. Um, so that's the origins of that name. Uh, but, but past that, I was like, I want to make a new channel name. And I went through like several. I remember one of them was Waluigi 64, which is just so lame. Just so bad. Um, <laughs> So I, I think eventually I just landed on this. I I don't fully know why. Maybe it was like partially because of the meme, but like I I couldn't tell you like a reason. I it just kind of happened. So. Well, it's it's an iconic name. I gotta say, it sticks in your yeah. head. Um, hello Mario. It's very good. Known across the globe. Um, but Mario, you are. <laughs> Known across the You actually you get a lot of views on your videos. I was just looking through your channel the other day, and I, I it's like. Do you monetize those videos? Because I bet you could be making uh, some money. Yes, I, I. So monetization is is locked until you hit a thousand subscribers. So when I did, I want to say summer uh-huh. last year, I did start monetizing, and um, it it has helped being a a soon to be like state college kid. It makes me feel a lot better about True. where I am. So, um, but yeah, I I don't know. It it was it was like it kind of like suddenly all blew up and. Uh, it's doing pretty well so yeah well that, that's awesome, i like man. his videos Listen. i like his videos yeah you like his video i, I like love his, his coaster too. stuff i'm a big i'm a big disney world guy so i love all your videos about disney world and about just like everything that's going on with the epic universe right now like mm. all the mystery behind that i love how you break it down um but anyways we'll link his channel in the description to all this podcast and everything on all platforms um but Mario, you you came to us today with a really fun topic. It's very, um, it's it's very different from when what we usually do, um, because you know you usually just talk about singular films. But today you, you wanted because originally we were gonna record this uh, around the time Guardians Three mm-hmm. came out, um, and I remember that was like that was the connection. Uh, but you brought with us today talking about the best trilogies. Which I think is such a fun topic. I can't wait. Like, besides the Guardians connection, what was like? What was the thing about trilogies and why you wanted to bring it to us today on Stacked? Uh, and while you talk about that, I need to go close my door because I realize my door is open. I just, a helicopter just flew okay. by, so I'll be right back. Um, I thought you were gonna say the door to your house. You're like, oh, I left my door in my house. The helicopter's coming through. Oh my um, god, the, the helicopter's coming in. Um. I, I i don't know I'll, I'll i'll be honest it was mostly because you guys have like so many episodes on so many things and i'm like <laughs> oh god i i don't it's true the other thing was like best theme park movie and and that feels like um you know maybe lock that in, that in uh the uh big stacked idea folder um but i don't know true it's not a not, not a whole thing to do there i can't even literally think about like one there's Roller coaster. Zombie Land is right? in a th- I haven't watched it, but right? Isn't that a theme park? It, it has go. like a scene in mm-hmm. a theme park. The, the finale is at a theme scene. park, right? There's vacation, I guess you could say, is sort of a. That's true. Is a vaca- a their roller destination coaster is film. A theme you could park. also go for like. Both vacations. That feel like a theme park ride, you know? Like, so I. I don't know. Let's Ooh. let's not tread too heavy. Oh, Martin Scorsese, Scorsese, Marvel Mind movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say okay, every well, Marvel movie. We'll we'll keep that one in the vault for later. But you know, today we're talking about trilogies. Um, and Brandon, why why are trilogies so popular? Why why do you think trilogies are like 
you know it's it's such I, a weird thing you know it's like well it's like the three act structure right it's like the way most dramatic foundation is set upon is either the three act structure or the five act structure yeah. and people really get a satisfaction in seeing a film franchise have a larger story over the period of like two or three six installments or something like that it's something satisfying uh and you can look towards like the first movie trilogy like major movie trilogy that was marketed as such was like the original star wars trilogy and i know i don't know if we're going to talk about it or not um but just like like as, in terms of what we're talking about here it's not the first trilogy that ever was hardly ever like snow white technically is it the first feature animated like like animated film maybe not really if you're like talking about Prince like the Avengers of Prince yeah. yeah so it's like most of the time when you hear people say oh it's like the first this it's not actually the first and in this case it's like very interesting to see like oh like the Star Wars trilogy is what like popularized this idea of storytelling being told over multiple installments and people falling in love with the idea of sequels with continuing characters and such. Yeah. And I think that's just capitalism mm. at work too, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Cause like the concept of the trilogy, uh, I did a little homework before this episode. Uh, Ooh. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to claim that I already knew this. Uh, the concept of the trilogy was created in uh, in ancient Greece when they put on plays, and the plays right. wouldn't necessarily connect like you said with like Star Wars. It'd be more uh, thematic connections between three, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. because I guess playwrights they they'd have like this big play competition, and people thought it was really cool to have the, the all these playwrights like connect their plays in some way. When is it through like themes and whatnot? Yeah, it's through themes. So you'd actually see that in films before, like you said, Star Wars. I said I think Star Wars wasn't the f the first trilogy, but it certainly it certainly made it as popular as it is today. You know, mm -hmm. and I feel like trilogies that came before that took the more uh, original approach. To that so you see trilogies that are like um, more thematic in connection than actual narrative and characters. You know. Mm -hmm. um so i'm sure we're going to talk about um a few all different kinds all different kinds of trilogies um so why don't we just get into it mario you are our, for our guest our special guest of honor let's let's kick off with a trilogy of your choice mm -hmm. uh so I'll, have okay. at it i was gonna go for an ancient greek play but you know you already talked about that so i, I guess i'll try to <laughs> think of something else. <laughs> those aren't on letterbox you can't you can't pick those those aren't on letterbox yeah, i don't know <laughs> can't go to a video store and rent those <laughs> um <laughs> you can go to a bookstore i i think uh the first one i want to talk about is is one that i watched fairly recently uh that i just i really really enjoyed uh, I know, um, Ethan, you're not as big of a fan, at least of the first two entries of this trilogy, as uh, I, I believe Brandon and I are. Brandon, I think, uh, gave, gave the first one a nine, the second one an eight. Uh, I just looked through it, um, and it's uh, the Before trilogy. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. The, these... oh, I, okay, yeah. You can't have this episode. You can't talk about a trilogy episode without the before yeah. trilogy. Even I can admit that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't it. know. It, it's just um, these are so unique. Um, I, oh, you getting up. Oh, he's gone. Okay. This happens, li <laughs> Mario, this happens literally all the time. Every episode, he just leaves and. We just keep talking. Okay. So a little behind the scenes for everybody. I'm just going to keep this. Okay. Brandon leaves a lot. Oh, there he comes. He's coming back. I keep getting distracted <laughs> by things. I feel bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, no I have that. Due to this. Oh, have that you, too. Yeah. He's got the visual reference. Has... Okay. Yeah. Chris has that, too. I, I could go run and grab his, but I'm not going to. Yeah. You just know, go and steal it. Leave the sh my own show. Come on. No. All right. Continue. Anyways, about the before trial. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, I, I. it's really just like. A story about these two characters and um just you know how they fall in love with each other and just the conversations and the location and just how beautifully they're all set up i um i really enjoy the first two uh i i think the first one is my favorite just because i think it nails the ending really 
Um, it, it feels a bit, you know, cliched, like the whole running after the, well, not quite running after the train, but going separate ways thing um, and all that. But then it just like seeing the locations we've been to in the film where all this like romance has been occurring and, and just seeing it empty um, afterwards. And I, I don't know, just something about that I thought was very well done i think the second one is very good as well uh it's like it's barely feature length i think it's like 84 minutes or something 80 minutes um yeah i did did not remember that yeah so it and um, it's a breeze that that one i i enjoyed almost as much it's um i i i believe that one's in paris which i'm going to fairly soon so i guess i'll i'll be there yeah (laughs) um and I don't know, I, I think that one's unique in, in the kind of, like, revisiting, like, where they were, where they are, and um, just kind of the, the narrative of, like, him kind of not being able to let go of it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but the third one, um, I still like it, but it's it's definitely my least favorite, like, by far. I, I, I don't know. Um mm-hmm. It's still very good. I, I think the, the best parts of these movies are the dialogue. Um, but really, um, I don't know. It feels more like a, a movie, I guess, which is like this, the structure of it, it. It feels like there's a lot more like traditional scenes rather than like a long string of dialogue like the other two, which I think makes it a little less unique. And then also, I, I don't right. really... Uh, fully understand the conflict there, but Ethan, I don't think you've seen this one, so I don't want to spoil it too much. Yeah, no spoilers, yeah. no spoilers. I am gonna watch it soon because now I have Chris's Blu-ray trilogy. So you need to rewatch the first, so you can just uh, as well rock because like they're good. Come on, yeah, <laughs> they're better than the. Six. I okay, so let me uh. let me tell you why <laughs> I have a messy relationship with the before trilogy. So uh, I, I know why, Brandon, because yeah, you were you experienced firsthand I was there. this confusion. Yeah, so yeah. Um, Going into film school, I had not seen this trilogy before, and Brandon and I took this class where... Industry Insiders. Yeah, it's called Industry Insiders, where uh, one of the... What was he? One of the executives of Castle Rock uh, Pictures. It was just like, he helped teach the class, and we watched a shitload of movies from Castle Rock. And we'd like then we'd like talk about the movies and the, how the movie was made afterwards, you know, like um, friends with the... benefits and Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> it, yeah, it was a wide variety. Oh, yeah, like yeah. we watched Misery, <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Then we watched like Two Weeks Notice, and I was like, "What is happening right now?" What? There's like no thematic connection between any of these films. But on the first day of class, um, he was like, "We're gonna start with uh, the Before trilogy," and um, he was like. And I was like, fuck, okay, this is, I mean, I was like, first of all, I was like, this is awesome because I've never seen these movies before, and it's one of my dad's favorite trilogies, and he always talks about mm-hmm. them, and um, I was like, okay, cool, we're ready, I'm ready to watch it, and we start with the first <laughs> ten minutes of the film, and then the, and they professor, shut it turns, <laughs> the professor turns it off, and she's like, that's all I want to show you guys, now we're going to watch uh, Before uh, Sunrise, and I'm like... <laughs> what yeah so the, the first before trilogy film i've seen is before sunrise um well so before sunset oh is it is sunset the second one sorry yeah so, okay so before sunrise first so we watched all of before sunsets so that's the first one i've seen mm-hmm. and then after like months later i finally went back to the first one um and then i haven't seen the okay, third one. yeah and <laughs> I think I, I'm just like I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass because I feel like I would have, I feel like I would have appreciated them more if I watched them in yeah. order, honestly. Because yeah, one of my main problems when to. I watched when I watched uh, Sunset was like I I don't really understand the chemistry between mm-hmm. these characters, um, and then when I watched uh, Before Sunrise, I'm like, wow, Ethan Hawke's character is like a lot more like annoying mm-hmm. and like pretentious than he was in the second film. And that's why I didn't like the first one. But I feel like if I watched the first one, I would have understand that he like he grows into the person that he is in the second one. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so that's that's basically why why I need to rewatch these films um, and finally watch Before Midnight. Um, but I got I gotta say like I I do I do prefer um, uh, Before Sunset because I just I feel like the conversations they have in that one uh, just 
the overall just like existential conversations that they have, I feel like stuck with me a bit more mm-hmm. than the ones that they have mm. in the first. One. I I feel like there's more iconic moments in the first one. Like of course the first time they meet, you know, and the ending. And Mario, you're right. The ending is a little cliche, but like it kind of it, it yeah. works. You know, and the the uh, record store scene really where works. they oh that's like that is a perfect scene. Or let me take a picture of you with just like the moment and he's staring mm-hmm. at her and they're staring at each other like so we can remember this moment but they don't even give each other their phone numbers yeah. you know so it like it doesn't fully like embrace the cliche because the second one kind of like tackles that and it's like oh it's just young mm-hmm. love in yeah. the moment you're not gonna care yeah and yeah I'm, but brandon you love these what do you think i love all of them yeah uh i think the week at well I go back. I just did a rewatch of these this year, early mm-hmm. this year, because my girlfriend had never seen them. So we we watched them in order. And I remember her favorite was Before Sunset. Mm. She and she was like bawling at the end of that one. She's like, can we watch the third one? And then I couldn't find the DVD, which is why I had to get the Criterion oh. version, because oh, really? I had the DVD. But like, I guess it got lost in the move. So uh, I thank God you had sad. that Martin Lawrence film, right? <laughs> Little man, not no, little wait, man. Not <laughs> what the? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I don't know why I was thinking uh, uh, little man. Brandon races counter. Put that up on the screen. <laughs> Ding. Ding. Uh, <laughs> it's like cinema sins. <laughs> uh, sure. Anyway, uh, before sunrise, I love that movie. That was that is probably my favorite personally. Mm-hmm. Just because it is a very traditional love story. And I think the conversations they have getting to know each other is just so magical and enchanting and walking through this like village with no like not village like city with like no big plans (laughs) is like such a amazing thing to see. Uh, Before Sunset's also very good. Um, I think now it's raised in my estimation, but it's still my least favorite. Not because I don't find it compelling at all, but because... I think the conversations they have are a little, but I honestly be having, I don't know. I, the more I think about it, the more there is like a realism to like the stuff that they have. And I can see how the first film is less real. And then the third one goes all in on being a realist, like sort of romance, but no spoilers, Ethan. It's, it is like, it feels like a real movie for at least the first half. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. there's, the first two scenes of the movie feel very genuinely like the first two films. And then once it goes into this like conversation at a dinner where it's not just the two of our mm-hmm. leads that we've seen from the other two movies, it's like so jarring and it feels out of place and it almost drags the film yeah. down. But I think mm-hmm. one I think it's needed to get to the point of what the film is about it just like it takes so long to get there that it's like okay the first one is the exact same length they're close to and it does a better job at containing a conversation like this so i don't know if that's link later struggling to live up to his own expectations that he set with the first two entries or whether or not it's um maybe the fact that he feels like it should evolve even further with the audience Mm. i Mm-hmm. I also think the third one. I I feel bad to keep um, <laughs> ragging on the third one. It's yeah, a good it movie. Is. It's it a is. really good I, movie. I, I I enjoy it. Um, I I think compared to like, I don't know, just before sunrise and before sunset, I feel like they're shot so beautifully. And before midnight is is shot very well, but it it just doesn't. It 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 isn't as good in my opinion. I I, I think it's like nice looking and all that. Um, but I I don't know it. it I, I think it's a, a step down in that regard. And honestly, um, I appreciate what he was trying to do with the conversation at the end, but I do feel like like the I, I the the big one in the bedroom. I, I'm I'm gonna keep it like that. Right. I, I just feel like it I don't know, maybe, maybe I just didn't want it to go the way it did, but I, I felt like it was a little out of character for I, I don't know. Both of them? Yeah, to an extent, both of them. But I was mostly annoyed with Ethan Hawke's character in, in that scene, which I guess maybe mm-hmm. you're supposed to be. But um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's hard to dance around the spoilers for that. 
I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I gotta get on this yeah. trilogy. I need. I know I need to finish it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do it once I get back from my big trip in Japan. I feel like that's appropriate. Mm-hmm. You know, after I've been world traveling, come yeah. back and watch a film about world travelers. Brand's like, whatever, man. He's like, yeah, I, I didn't have to travel around the world to appreciate these movies. Well, maybe I do. Okay, I, don't I might know. rewatch uh, um, Before Sunset because it takes place in Paris. Like, like I said, I, I feel like that would be interesting. That's a good man. call. Yeah, that's a really good call. Which brings to mind, like, films that you can watch in a trilogy that don't feel like out of place. Because sometimes. I don't know about you guys, but like when I watch a trilogy, if I watch one, I have to watch mm-hmm. them all sometimes. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to bring up one that's like you feel like you can just watch any single one? Well, this also kind of goes into what you were saying about thematic resonance more so than character resonance. Right. Uh, I'm picking the Cornetto trilogy. I had that on my list. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> that's a good trilogy, yeah. man. That's a good one. Yeah. Because it's connected through, of course. The use of very similar uh, actors and then the same two lead actors. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not necessarily like any of these are like the same thing, but they're all like buddy movies in a sense. They're all funny. They all contain the same references to like Cornetto, uh, the ice cream brands. And, And essentially it's like about these two buds just hanging out and making movies. And I wish we still got films like this from like director combo, director star combos, you know? Because it seems like that is such like an idea that's sort of died out with the movie star, which is like, hey, we can have this director who really loves working with this one actor, or these two actors, and then like taking those actors and uh, putting them in different situations through like whatever movie. And take Cornetto, for example, the first one's a zombie comedy, the second one's a police buddy cop movie, and the third one's like a alien invasion. Like they movie. live aliens yeah they live yeah. in invasion of the body snatchers stuff like that but a comedic yeah. version right right and i can't get enough of all of these movies and i haven't watched them in forever so I'm, mm-hmm. they're bound for a rewatch for me but you could watch any of them and it yeah. doesn't feel like oh i need to watch the other two but you would gladly do it anyway yeah, yeah i what i love about these films is uh like you said you can just watch any single one there's no narrative they're not ta- they don't take place in the same world the only threads is that it stars Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and I feel like the thorough line of each of these films are is their friendship. You know, it's like it's like a platonic love trilogy, which is funny because like film trilogies or most trilogies. Here's me cracking out my, more of my homework that I did. I I found out that trilogies were more. Uh, they're more suited for romantic novels. So like romance novels were written in trilogies. Um, and then romantic films were like presented in trilogies before, but this is a platonic love trilogy, you know, where it's about, uh, two guys and like reconciling with their friendship with each other in three different, like insane, uh, situations that all came from like eighties genre, I'd say, or 80, 70 genre, you know, um, I gotta say hot fuzz will always be my favorite of the three. Um, I think that film's perfect. Um, I think Shaun of the Dead is great, and I think World's End is good. I don't think it's amazing. I just think it's a good, a good one, you know. Um, but I know so many people who like, who love. I know someone who thinks World's End's the best that, one, you um, know, and that Hot Fuzz is the worst. That, that's you know? me. Uh, not not Hot Fuzz is the worst. That's you. But, um, I don't I, I don't okay. think you're thinking of me, but that that is me where I. I, I think, um... <laughs> but no, but that's just that's just a tone attest to this trilogy. Where it's just like it, it's it, to me, it feels like Ghibli films, where like everyone has like the a drastically different ranking of the Ghibli films. You know, where you're they, right, and that just, I like, love Dear Week and the Witch. The I know you one. do, and I know you love Tales of Versi as well. Um, that's so good. Goro is <laughs> no, so but good like, at making movies. Everyone's everyone's arrangement of this trilogy and, and what they prefer is different. And that just like atones to like how solid it is, you know, that it's like, there's not a clear best one and there's not a clear worst one, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all over the place, but that's Mary. That's awesome. You're the second person I know that that thinks world's ends the best one. And it's good. Uh, I want, I want to hear why you think it's the best one. I'd say there's probably a total of 10 people who think it's the best one. Maybe (laughs) like it's it's not many people. I I think, uh, but they're passionate. Generally most people consider it to be the worst one as far as I'm aware. Um, 
And I, I don't get it. Uh, I will say I haven't watched Hot Fuzz in a while. I rewatched Shaun of the Dead and I thought it was like good. Um, I mean, Edgar Wright was like one of the first directors I fell in love with, uh, you know, a high school film kid, mm -hmm. uh, kind of predictable, I guess. Um, Same. Yeah. No, I think we've, we've all been. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, like, uh, I, I remember watching all these movies and loving them all. And um, I don't know. I think I always had an affinity towards World's End because I think the structure is so good. I think the I think it's it's funnier than Shaun of the Dead, which is a, a hot take. Maybe I, I, I just I, I think it's very funny. It's um, very unique, like how just how the story plays out. And I, I love that you can like look further into it and like see these kind of easter eggs like all the bars being named after like what's gonna happen within the them and all that like i love that kind of thing oh yeah um and that's why i love baby driver so much but that that's a whole other you know whatever but um mm -hmm. yeah i i don't know i just i feel like it's um you know again i'd have to watch hot fuzz again but it, it's the best crafted like it i feel like edgar wright really perfected his craft when he made that one and uh, I don't know. It's just like nonstop pacing, really good comedy, um, and just you know, it's so unique. It's it's great. It's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, yeah, I think I do I, definitely want to revisit it. I I don't think I've seen it since the oh okay. Um, I would I think as well. Me too. Mm, yeah. But also, I think the expectations are just so high. Like I think Hot Fuzz came out in like two thousand seven, mm -hmm. and. There was such a long wait between Hot Fuzz and The World's mm -hmm. End that people's expectations probably for another Edgar Wright, uh, Peg Frost sort of duo reunion, trio reunion was like so high that when it ended up coming out, they were like, oh, it's like Paul. And I'm like, yeah. no, it's not like I, Paul. I, I'm <laughs> not going to lie. When I was a kid, I thought Paul was going to be the third film in the Chrono Trilogy. Because I, I, I remember I was like, but he didn't direct this one, but it's got those two guys. Is this the third one? <laughs> I think Scott Pilgrim was in between Hot Fuzz and World's End, right? That, that was 2010 when that came out, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, you're right. That probably contributed to so. it. Also, that that's a great movie too. He's he's a really good director, except for his um his latest one. But last night, yeah. Soho, yeah. Soho, oh Soho, yeah. that was like that was that was a shocking I, to me. I was like, I I I don't because I don't think I've ever given any of his other films above a four out of five. You, you mean know, below, and then I saw right? Soho, I'm or, like, what? Below. Oh yeah. yeah, below. Sorry, below, below four. <laughs> and I, and then I saw that one. I'm like, wow, this is bad. Like, <laughs> and it was like, it was just like so shocking. You, 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 watched... you know, like it wasn't like it wasn't mad. It was like bad. I was like, what is going on right you now? You watched all his you other know? films. And I, it just, like, eh, you know. And then last night in Soho was really the one that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Finally, it's with with that movie. It's just like I guess. I don't, I mean, it, he doesn't tap into his comedy and then he like makes a very dodgy statement through his love of the mm. cinematic art form. Like he, if you look at his like top 1000 on Letterboxd, right? You see like, I can see where the last night in Soho is with all these like 60s and 70s. The like, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, then I look at it and I'm like, but it seems like a pale imitation with like a very problematic message. Mm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think so. the script was just that it just, it died in its script, I feel. You know, mm -hmm. like I think yeah. the direction is cool. Um, sometimes I think it's, I think it's one of his most like annoying mm. like films in terms of his style. Like it's like doesn't really suit. It's a little well, too chaotic sometimes. I don't know. It's it, I think it's uh, boring in terms of like I, I. It's just it has none of the stylistic aspects of like Scott Pill. Well, not that it needed to. But, it's, um, yeah. Right. yeah. It's or not kinetic driver, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Baby Driver, like that, that, that one isn't a comedy, but I feel like he, he, it's like near perfect movie. Although the second half kind of falters, but uh, I, I don't know what happened there. And I, I think I walked out of theaters liking it because I, I like Edgar Wright, and then I kind of like think about it more, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. It's definitely yeah. his worst, um, without a doubt. I. He I just need him to make another one just to get back. Yeah, back into yeah. Because I, I, I know people are mm -hmm. it, it, with the McDonald's ad too, right? Weren't, weren't people like, oh my god, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, I, <laughs> like, he, he needs to come back and, and, and prove himself again. I guess he does. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with another trilogy that um, 
you can watch just each film on its own. I actually, I don't, I actually really don't like the third installment of this trilogy, but I think the first two are so great um, that you can, it can honestly just be two films, but it, since it is a trilogy, I want to bring it up. Um, it is the Quatsi trilogy. Mm. I don't know if you guys have seen, I know Brandon's seen, the, seen the first, first one. one. He's not, he's not that big of a fan. Mario, have you, have you ever seen any of the Quatsi so films? So I, Koyana Scotsi. My mom, when I was probably like, it, it, like end of middle school early high school showed me like i want to say like a 10 20 minute clip of the first movie and it felt like i remember mm-hmm. it feeling like it was like three minutes long like i was sucked in i was like holy shit one day i've got to watch this and i never have so <laughs> um yeah. well they, they're hard to find if you don't have like uh if you don't have the criterions it's like th- those movies are hard to come by um unless you of course pirated mm-hmm. but um those I just the Quatsi trilogy, Koyana Scotsi, um, is one of my favorite films of all time. I think it's the best documentary ever made that is just about life as we know it, how we got here, um, and what is wrong with our world. And not in like a like a Ugh, society kind of way. It's just like it, you just you realize what is wrong because it's just showing you what is. Mm-hmm. You know? There's not a lick of dialogue. It's completely observational it's scored by the master philip glass one of the greatest composers of our time um and it is just images of our world and people living in it completely observational and it's honestly one of the most beautiful like just rorschach tests of how you feel about our world you know um and that i just remember watching that uh and it just blew me away and then uh boy on a Poyana Scotsi is also very cool because it shows it's a film more about like uh, the human the human spirit I guess you know and like it shows how cultures around the world work uh, to keep their cultures afloat you know we see like we see farmers we see construction workers we see office workers we see everything and the the score in that is really good um, I don't know Mary, have you seen the Truman Show? Yes. Okay. Uh, in the scene where Truman realizes that like everything's, um, you know, that everything's like not what it is, mm. you know, and he start he walks out into the cars and it's playing that score. That's from Poyana Scotsi. Oh, okay. Um, and and just like it, the the whole movie, like the score is just like that running at tens, you know. And then uh, Nate Poyana Scotsi. Mm. I think is kind of hot garbage because he's trying to make this um, film that's warning about technology. And it's like, it's all like these weird, like Radio Shack tech demos and like 3D models. And I'm just like, what, why, what is happening here? You know? And it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's honestly kind of a nauseating film. And it's like, it's a film about technology in the eighties. So it's like really dated, (laughs) you know? Um, I'd, I'd say just skip that one. But the first two are so strong that it makes this trilogy like so unique. Um, okay. And I had to bring it I, up because I love them so I looked much. at the cast list and I just saw Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton. Yeah, Bill. I, they just use like archival yeah, footage yeah. of him. No, what if it's like, hello, I'm, I'm Bill Clinton. <laughs> it's just an intro. And, uh, welcome to the... Welcome to the digital realm. <laughs> <laughs> he's like this 3D polygon Bill Clinton, like floating head. <laughs> he's he's my favorite uh, actor. <laughs> he is. You you thanked yeah. him at the Game Awards. I remember that. Yeah. Um, uh, Brandon, you've seen the first one, dude. I I implore you to check out the second one. I think you would like that one more because there's like there's a bit more People. of a human connection in that one. I and just feel like when I'm. Criterion. Oh, <laughs> it's not like I'm letting you borrow any movies right now. Shut what? I didn't mean that as like a oh I'll lend you this. I'm like that because we lend each other movies. That's what we do. I, yeah, I have four of your '70s Best Picture winners. I know that, but you should watch <laughs> it, and I want to give it to you so you can watch it, not give yeah. it, to, lend it to you. Yeah. You're gonna give it to me? Wow, that's I get so three nice. No criteria. No, that's not nice at all. That would be a crime if I gave away my Quatsi trilogy. That would... I just. I don't know. The score is great. Philip Glass is a genius. Um, I love his work in Mishima and the Truman Show. However much of it is actually new, I don't know. But those movies 
scores have are excellent. I kind of felt like it's interesting an interesting idea for like a 30 to 45 minute short but like a 90 minute movie kind of like it i will also say that you watched this movie on your laptop which is like hey that was not my choice i know but you should have waited until you could watch on a like at least a bigger screen you know where you're comfy yeah i i feel like watching that movie on your laptop with your headphones would just be like where you have like easy access to be distracted by something else i'm not saying you were but I'm saying for me, if I watched that the first time on my laptop, I would have been checking out all the time. I watched it on Tubi. Tubi. Or Pluto. Yeah, it's, it's on Tubi. And it had ads. Right. It had ads? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No wonder you didn't like it, bro. It's like, That's like if you wa- if you went to like an orchestral concert for Philip Glass and they stopped like every five minutes to say like Prilosec or something. Like, what the fuck? No. <laughs> this concert is brought to you by t- Tylenol. <laughs> Get some. Anyways, back to the the sweeping music of Philip Glass. No, you can't do it's, that. It's, what the hell are you doing, it's man? Great. It's interesting oh visually, to say the least. I, I I don't mind the visual flavor of it. It's like watching, but it's also like the Tree of Life. You know how like the Tree of Life has that section in the middle of the movie where it, it is. Just, a lot but like this that. is just it's just the whole movie, you know. <laughs> and there is something the compelling about it's like just that and it's like yeah sure it's visually engaging it's got beautiful music but it doesn't really do anything beyond that other than capture the propensity of man and how big it is as a society how we become massive big man (laughs) (laughs) yeah okay uh i mean i know i I don't i don't hate it it's it's fine it's watchable it just felt, I, it felt long. It felt I just long. Ex- expected better from you because I know you're so smart. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, but Mary, you should definitely check him out. Uh, I recommended that film to Tori Brandon, and I feel like that was a mistake. I think she's going to hate that movie. I, well, if she ever watches those documentaries that we all recommended her, who knows? Now we're hey, calling her and out. And if she's list, if she's listening to this, she's I definitely just wanted not. To know. <laughs> she's not. Me? But uh, I'm going to say it anyway. Whenever she's becoming like Justin, little Justin, if you recommend her a movie that you think and basically know that she'll like, I think she's gonna find a reason not to like it. True. And, don't you uh, agree, Mary? Yeah, no, I, I know these people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, don't you? You know them well. Know. Yeah, we, it, yeah. You don't even need to say it anymore. I know you already know this. <laughs> hey, okay, we're bringing Mario. a personal element into the podcast. <laughs> Mario, uh, let's throw out another trilogy. What do you got for us? Okay. Um, I, I will say I, I have um, two other categories of, of trilogies, which I call semi-cheats and, and full-on cheats. So, like, um, oh. so, so cool. these are not, not, really, not really trilogies, but, like, at least with the semi-cheats, it's, it's three movies. Um, if, if you'd like, I can continue with regular trilogies. Um, but... No, let's get creative here. Okay. I want to hear these. I want okay. to hear them. I'm debating which one to do first. Hmm. Um. Maybe make it gradual. Do the semi and then. Oh no no no! I, I I I knew that. I, I just have three semi cheats and I don't know oh. which one to pick. Um. Oh okay okay. You got a whole he, pool of them. Our guest didn't even come prepared. I, I came no, well, to prepared. be fair, neither did I. I I literally just have a whole list of trilogies that I'm just looking at. I'm just I decided to talk I, about I did one. write down every trilogy I've, I've ever watched, um, which probably didn't help. But what sucks is yeah. uh, this is a sidetrack. But um, I've I've only watched The Godfather Part One, so I can't put that on there. Um, That's fine. I've I've watched well the, the second one I've heard is good. I know the third one sucks, but it's, it's amazing. Yeah. No, the third one's not that bad. It's fine. Second one's good. First one's just a little bit better, in my okay. opinion. I haven't seen the third um, one. I'm not going to waste my time. Second one, first one. Okay, one. noted. Um, the, it, <laughs> take, take no audio yeah. listeners, what we just did. Um, we are comparing this the them with our hands, like skills. Yeah. Anyways. Um, oh, the, the, the major one, uh, the Man With No Name trilogy, which I know isn't really like a, a, a proper trilogy, like it wasn't envisioned as a trilogy, but kind of post ended mm-hmm. up as one uh i've only watched the first yeah, two i still haven't watched the good the bad and the ugly uh which is oh like, it's a big, it's a the big, best one yeah. the best. so but i really enjoyed You're, the first oh, two the second one i'm was jealous really of good. you mario we get to watch that for the first time yeah. 
Damn. Um, so th- those are the big two I'd, I'd say I still need to, to go through. Um, but yeah. in terms of the semi-cheats, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the funny one. I'm going to go with Fast and Furious 5 through 7 um, as, as my <laughs> um, semi-cheat trilogy. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, I think maybe a, a, a better version of this would be four through six but i don't like four very much i don't love six uh but five and seven um are are really good i i don't know if they're like good good but i really enjoyed them um so just for context uh i'm i'm watching this with uh the the monkey time uh group kind of uh we've been going through them right uh, we we skip two and three because uh, it, apparently it doesn't seem like it's like fully story like basically we want to watch ten what? eventually I I, I want to go back and watch two and three one day go back to three go back to yeah. three at least two sucks three is awesome okay I, I've uh, is three Tokyo yeah three is Tokyo Drift right three is Tokyo okay. Drift that one's and really then fun. too yeah. fast too furious I know all their names which is sad um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah I don't know I know them better than my own grandma. <laughs> yeah, so so we had watched one and four up until at this point. I I didn't like one very much. I didn't like four very much either. Um, and then five is four. like genuinely like a pretty good action five. spy movie. Um, that's my favorite. Yeah, one. I, I I know that's most people's favorite. It, it was my favorite um, for a bit, and probably is the better movie. Um, but Furious Seven is just ridiculous it's really really i i think i wrote in my review it is the stupidest movie i've ever seen probably um it's just (laughs) it's really really dumb but it is it is glorious it is just glorious wait mario and you haven't seen you have you seen eight or nine yet or ten no we we haven't so we haven't gotten past uh, seven yet so well if seven's the stupidest movie you've seen just wait okay (laughs) um okay because i feel like once after you see eight nine ten you're like oh seven's like this the stuff they do in that is pretty reasonable <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> it, it isn't necessarily that either it's just the plot like i, I don't get why the villain is it's just the plot um but the villain like just follows that it's weird because they're like doing something completely different like they're trying to I don't fully remember like who cares Uh, but they're trying to like get something (laughs) that's completely unrelated to the villain they introduced in the first act but the villain keeps like following them for no reason at all into these like spy (laughs) encounters and it's just really funny because there's no reason for him to be there and it doesn't add it like anything (laughs) to the scene it would have been fine without it it just feels like they they keep um stacked reference uh they keep stacking up these uh <laughs> oh! these uh things onto yes! the action thing oh. and i i don't know the the building hopping is glorious it's so funny it's so cool um <laughs> i i i i get the ending i think is like touching it's it's a, a good tribute um and you know it's unfortunate like all that happened um but i i I don't know just like the whole experience it was just like just so so much fun i i ended up giving it a seven out of ten but i i was genuinely tempted to give it an eight it's one of the most like batshit insane movies i've ever seen (laughs) um and then six um i i i don't i don't love six i i will say uh, when I watch them with like the the monkey time group, I'm not paying attention too much to like the right. plot. It's it's pretty hard to yeah. pay attention to the movies yeah. when, in those Discord movies. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I'm not like necessarily paying attention, but I I I, I didn't right. think it was um, nearly as entertaining as uh, five and seven, and um, I I do think five might be the more competent and better movie, but seven is just ridiculous. So that's got to be my top. You know what? I I will allow this trilogies within inside franchises. Mm-hmm. I feel like that that's a thing that exists because, like like I said, I feel like the Indiana Jones trilogy, the first three movies, you can watch that as its own thing. Yeah. You know, because there is a clear, definitive ending in Last Crusade where you're like, all right, that's good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, or I mean, you could talk about the MCU movies. You know, where there's like 
it's a whole big franchise, but then there's like trilogies. Like, yeah, you know, I was going to talk about this later, but I, I think I'm going to talk about other films. I, I think the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy is like the best superhero trilogy ever made. Mm-hmm. And of course, you need to know what happens in Endgame and Infinity War, but I still feel like those three Guardians films are a solid ass trilogy, yeah. you know? Um, but I feel like there is sort of an, a narrative uh, an arc in within five, six, and seven. Yeah. Um, man. The, the one Walker time we're actually getting Diesel really in-depth into the Fast and Furious franchise, the one time Chris isn't here, he's probably I, so That's mad. why I wanted to bring uh, it up, too, because I, I, knew, I, knew, <laughs> I knew I had to find some way since he isn't here. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, like, I'm with you. I, I can't remember anything that happens in 6. Oh, yeah. I don't um, know. I remember. But, like, 5 sort of sets up is, like, their, the family's goal now is that they want to, like, they want to quit this life mm-hmm. and they want to escape, you know? So then it's a heist to get the money to do that. And then, um, whatever happens, in six. you know, then that whatever happens <laughs> six. And then of course the ending is sort of like a send off to Paul Walker for him, yeah. for his character, you know? And that sort of gives a satisfying conclusion. And honestly, uh, that would have been a satisfying conclusion for the fast and furious yeah. franchise as a whole. But then also we wouldn't have gotten Fast X with Jason Momoa and all of his glory. I'm so excited to watch uh, I can't it. wait for you yeah. to watch that movie. Oh, my God. Um, Brandon, you got to watch it too. I've seen the clips online, <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying not to spoil myself, but oh, my God. Here we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't stop doing that. Whenever I go to my car with people, I always do the skip and go, here we go. <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? Um, and and I just can't one final thing I, I will say, uh, like, Fast Five is the one that kind of introduces this new cast of characters. I feel like um, right. Four kind of has the, the the original, you know, Fast oh, One. Oh, true. And then Fast Five, it's like, Dom is like, we got to call everyone I know. And then you meet, like, ten people you've never seen before. Um, so Well, you, you, you do know them from two and three. Yeah, so. I, I know. Probably should have probably watched two and three. I'm just no, I know, I know seven. Oh, this is another thing that makes it so stupid i know that seven like intertwines with tokyo drift where like the guy from yeah. tokyo drift <laughs> dies and it turns out it was like i it, i don't know like furious six was a prequel to tokyo drift and i don't know it's it's, it's ridiculous so um it's yes. ridiculous because the guy who's in tokyo drift who's the main character is like 19 years old oh. and then he, and then he's and like he, it's 40 and shit. fury and, and what what is it he's in fast seven or which it's one is six it? i think he's i don't in even seven. know he's, a, he, yeah. he's in, yeah he dies in seven yeah it's... well yeah no not han the oh. other one the white man oh, the white guy yeah he's like super that's the protagonist scene. you're like he's, what the yeah. hell? I, I don't know which white guy you're referring to but I, I, it's okay mm. one of the yeah. many <laughs> as you can see I, I, nobody remembers I, the as names, you can like... see I don't care about these movies, That's but five, <laughs> six is my favorite actually. Really? So this bad what happens in this six? bad. Then tell us what six happens is, in six. <laughs> okay, because the the fourth one is like they're on the run from the government, and the fifth one is like they can do a job for like safe. not for the government, but yeah, just to steal money so that they can like get out of the life, as Ethan says. But at the end, like Dom, uh, Dom's character is basically in connection with the rock and the rocks like hey i can get you a pardon and the sixth one's like a revenge movie but it's like it's grounded and realistic oh, yeah. and it's a spy movie but it's not over the top like seven eight and nine so it feels like it strikes the it's like a para a parabolic curve for me where like it starts out as taking itself way too seriously in the first like two or three fast movies mm-hmm. uh as like racing movies and then it, it kind of dips into uh being serious 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 and then it gets finds like that perfect level between serious and like silly but then it just goes all silly so maybe it's more like a a downward trend in terms of it's like serious <laughs> which to is silly not then. a parabola at all actually <laughs> i know it's not it's not it's just a it's just a, a slippery slope that leads to hell <laughs> i guess but <laughs> the parabola might be in terms of quality although again i haven't watched it yet. in terms yeah. of quality did you see uh, yeah th- but uh they announced what the title of the Dwayne the Rock Johnson the Hobbs spinoff is going to be the next one they did yeah it's what Hobbs is it? the, like, the working title is Hobbs and Reyes so huh? it's going to be and that's Jason Momoa's character oh god oh 
Okay. People, that, so I it's guess not... that's what it's gonna be. Somebody said that it's like, oh, this is like oh this God. the story that sets up what happens. Like it's like as convoluted as the Saw mm. style, where it's the story that sets up this character's relationship with him since he wasn't in Fast Ten because of choices. Or nine. He wasn't or nine. nine either. Anyways, well, well walk in I here's. I mean, no, he's in a post well, okay, okay. Yeah, it was it was filmed like a week before. Oh, okay. The f- I'm not even joking. It was filmed the week before because The Rock had a feud with Vin Diesel. Yeah, I, I've heard of this. And, and then Black Adam bombed. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, and then he was I like, need a franchise all, all, the, all the DC um, people are going. I, I've heard about the other character that gets revived, but I, I won't spoil it. Yeah. Right. But... Um, uh, Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a solid foundation, I guess. That's the best. The best three movies, right there. So mm-hmm. that is, yeah. I'd say those yeah. are up at the top. Uh, and then I'd throw in Tokyo Drift if you want something fun. But like, no, no, you don't. Okay. Well, Brandon, you give us another trilogy. Uh, another one that's not. It's loosely connected, but it's not connected. Is the Romero Dead trilogy? Mm. Ah, I Wait. think. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah okay okay i was trying to figure out because what was the third one uh day of the dead day of the dead right i was gonna say right and the, i'm like that's not romero no it's not but <laughs> i think these films are in essence like the foundation for like zombie mythology at least in the u.s mm-hmm. and each of them establishes a different corner of it you know and the first one's just a really great, honestly, just a great independent film about like re- race relations and like relating it to the 1960s civil rights movement, yeah. especially with the progressive with the lead that's like African American. Uh, yeah. And you have your second film, which is foundational for numerous reasons because of like the setting. Um, I would say like the the effects because the first one's not big; it doesn't really have any gore effects or anything. It's not trying to push the censors. But the second one is like, oh, it's like establishing like how zombies are killed and like what the lore is behind what how they exist. It's like almost political in a sense. Mm-hmm. And then the third one is like a military industrial movie. It's kind of comedic at times. And it also features like zombies that talk and yeah. like develop <laughs> some sort of intelligence after the post has died. And all of that is very interesting. And yes, I think the third one is the worst by a pretty fair margin. As is the case with most trilogies, but it's really like it's experimental, honestly, Mm -hmm. especially for when it came out. And you could argue, well, like Return of the Living Dead. And I'm like, well, it's not what we're talking about here. That's punk rock. And it's like much in the veins of that's better. That's like Friday six, you know. Yeah, that sa- that's same that's sort Jason of tone Lives of zombie movies. Well, absolutely. Whereas this takes itself a little bit more serious, which I appreciate. So. Yeah, I, I'd say the first two are they're pretty. Uh, they go hand in hand. Uh, I feel like I mean the first one is just so. Um, it, it was it the first zombie movie? No, it was one of the first no. though. I feel like it was. I, I, it was one I, of I, the first. I think I watched what's up because there were like I, I watched some sort of video essay in, in one of my film classes that I think there was like a. Like kind of based on like voodoo, uh, that that kind of zombie movie. I I forget oh, what the name yeah. of it was, but it, this this was pre. But at the very least, this is like the you know what when we think of zombies, this is the type of zombie we're thinking of. You know, so in that case, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like both of these movies, sort of like uh, the first two movies, sort of developed what we know of as the zombies, because like the first movie, you don't really see them as like you know their body parts aren't falling off you know they're not like they're not super decayed and stuff like that you know they have they're just they're just people. like they're just people Dead with people. really like cold skin and like and and like bloodshot eyes you know who walk slowly and and like groan and stuff you know mm-hmm. um and you're right Brandon. it's it's a super t- it's it's a really tight film which is like that's that's hard for a zombie movie because like when you're telling a zombie movie you like a lot of people I feel like get lost in the world building of like what this mm-hmm. what the world would be like if this outbreak happened you know but this is a really tight <laughs> film only focuses on a few characters and just like a house little house and so, a yeah. little house mm-hmm. um and then the second one I feel like uh it perfected the world building of you know 
the z- zombie genre with, of course, like the iconic shopping mall, locking yourself up in the shopping mall, you know, which is like uh, in itself, like a commercialistic aspect. So it's like, yeah, the first one's like sociocultural. The second one's like you know, commercial and the third one's military or yeah. however you would say it. <laughs> militaristic. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But but also it, but it, that one also just shows like uh, it had a really diverse cast of characters in the mall, you know, and that helped build out the world of like how different types of people would react to the zombie apocalypse. And that's what made it so fun. And then the third one's interesting. Cause yeah, it shows like a militaristic, uh, sort of exploration of it, but it also sort of, it gets more into like a little bit of the science of it, you know? Um, I mean, science fiction, of course, cause it's not really real, but there's like a mad scientist character, Um, and they're locked, like, they go back to another, like, condensed setting of, like, this military bunker for most of the movie, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I just feel like the characters aren't as strong in that one, you know? Which leaves, like, the the sort of drama to be a bit empty, in my opinion. Um, but the relationship between the doctor and, like, the zombie that he's experimenting on is really cool, you know? And how that, like, all comes to a conclusion, uh, is cool. Yeah, this is a cool, this is a cool trilogy, um... Mary, have you seen any of these ones? I watched the first one. I, I like it. I respect it for, you know, what it does. Um, I I do think, I don't know, the world building is a little weak. I don't really like the whole newsreel aspect of it. I understand the uh, concept of just, you know, being holed up in the little house and that's your source of information. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it relies a bit too much on it at times. Um, but regardless, I mean... This is like a, a 1960s independent movie. It's like, you know, you can't expect too much of it. Um, I think the practical effects are very good. Um, I think the ending just sucks, but in like the good way, you know, <laughs> it's it's like, yeah, yeah. really sucks. Just like, fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I appreciated the first one. I liked it. I uh, didn't like love it. Um, I've heard really good things about the second one. I'd like to check it out. Um, I'm not going to rush to see the third one, um, but yeah, I definitely want to see the second. Second one's like... hard to find, but there's a good copy on YouTube. Oh, okay. If you can okay. still, if it's still out there. I feel like that'd be a really cool Monkey Time Discord server movie. Mm. I'm surprised we haven't done that yet, but uh, I feel like maybe we'll we'll do that around Halloween. Time. You gotta join us for um, it, the last yeah. time you were there. I think was Nope, right? shit you're right yeah yeah I'm, well it's because I'm, I'm always busy like because most most of the people on the um in the server are you're, y'all are east coast people yeah so you're, you're all watching movies like in the middle of the day where i'm like i'm out doing stuff yeah you know? yeah that's fair um but, i gotta you know, travel the world i gotta be in the freaking uh, forest oh but... <laughs> shut up shut up man maybe i do gotta be in the forest all right people Leave are stealing alone. my dad's credit card <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> I caught him, by the way. I caught that fucker. The streets of Chicago. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to talk about a trilogy. Uh, we're running a little long here, so I, this is going to be the last trilogy I talk about. Since I sort of already mentioned the Guardians films, that was going to be my other pick. It was going to be Quan Scott's the Guardians. And then I want to talk about a trilogy where it's like, you have... Like, I, I don't see... A, I don't ever see myself watching just one of these films. I like, I have to watch all of them, you know, like all at once within either like three days or one day, you know? Um, and I'm, that was, be Transformers. I was going to pick, it was, I was going to pick Transformers. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I was going to pick Lord of the Rings, but I feel like that one's a little cliche. Oh, um, we're not going to talk it, about it. You Dang. know, well, we can't, we can't, if we want, someone else can talk about it. Um, but I want to talk about another trilogy. Brand's going to be, Brand's going to love this. Um, because I tried to watch all three of these films once I watched the first two and then I had to in back to back and then I went to the third one, the third day or the second day. Um, Oh yeah. The human condition trilogy I figured that. Woo. Whew, Hachi Machi. Heavy, that is like heavy movies. That, that is a heavy movie. Um, what how long how long is that trilogy overall is it like okay the first hours? one's like th- the first one's three the second one's like 240 and then the third one's 320 so that's like nine hours it's like around nine hours um and nine yeah. hours of fun as i say um no it's not 
No, no, it is not fun. <laughs> it is, it is not fun, but it is phenomenal. You know, um, you know, you basically just follow this Japanese soldier through the shits. You know, um, the first film you really see him. Uh, it, it sort of follows like the three little, like three settings of war. Wouldn't you say, Brandon? Like the first film is him in a Prison prisoner camp. of war camp. The yeah. second film is he's on the battlefield. And then uh-huh. the, fir- the third film, it's sort of like also the battlefield, but he's also sort of like a deserter. Right? A wanderer. A wanderer. I would say he's homeless, familyless. He's a homeless. He's a little homeless. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they are just heartbreaking, you know? It's They're heartbreaking, but also beautiful. I feel like in the same way that Schindler's List is, you know? Where it's just like... Oh, yeah. It's just like, this is like the beauty of the human spirit during the darkest times in our history, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it really feels like you know this character after being with him uh, through nine these hours. three films, these nine hours, um, and just like seeing, having him experience loss, you know, and devastation, but also seeing him overcome it. You know, and seeing that even when this dude has nothing and he's in the worst spot in all of human history, he's still able to uh, fight through it all. You know, Um, it's a great it's one of the best like pieces of anti-war, I think. Um, Yes. Just because it is very it is a very humanistic uh, piece of anti-war, this trilogy. Um, And it just. It le it leaves you on a insanely devastating note, um, but I think overall you're still able to like just take in like how it's it's weird to say beautiful this man's journey was, but it kind of is because of how much he was able to uh you know fight through it all. Um, but yeah, this was this, this was one of the hardest movie marathons I've ever done. Um, hence, I was gonna try to do it all in one day. Uh, not for wimps. Like, it, it's not for wimps. This is no Weenie Hut Junior. Um, this is this is this is big boy cinema. Um, and yeah, I just like after the second film, I was like, I need to like lay down or like. I either need to lay down and sleep for the rest of the day or I need to go touch grass. That was like, so I went and like, I remember like going for a walk or you something like that. In the just fields. Like, I frolicked in the fields and I enjoyed, you know, not being alive during, uh, world war two. World war two. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, Oh, what a, what a time to not be there, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, phenomenal trilogy. Um, Brandon, you're the one who got me hooked on it. What yeah. do you have to say for yourself? Why did you do this to me? Because, I I mean, when you look at a film that has high ratings that is this long or that has this many parts to it, mm-hmm. you start to take notice and you're like, okay, well, what is so great about it, right? And sitting down and watching it, it's the scope, it's the scale, especially for the age it was created, uh, especially for the talent involved. Mm-hmm. And... I just th- I just think it's such a harrowing journey, and I think we could take a lot from it as a society, uh, whether or not that means from the war angle side of things or from the more personal character-centric motives and change, how a person changes over a long period of time and through like being shell-shocked and you being right there with them. It- it's impeccable and like perfect in its construction. Um, well, I-, I think the first film is hopeful and it's like it leaves it leaves you on this hopeful end and you're like oh is every film gonna be like this yeah yeah and every every film (laughs) nope it's the last bit you get the rest of the series (laughs) yeah (laughs) you're like oh that was so great i'm gonna watch which is probably why ethan popped in the next one because it was like like, rewarding to see i can do this (laughs) and then 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 you get to the second one and then the third one like oh And there, there's something so human about that. And I guess, I know, people don't want to watch films that make them upset or make them 
not entertained because they view film as an entertainment medium solely but this is not not just that it's like a, an examination of the self an examination of what it means to be human especially during a tor- terrible time that's war i like to m- imagine it as like come and see but longer and honestly yeah sl- and but not yeah. starring a kid as well i think and not I think not as violent come and see but it's more than any of these yeah. beca- because i mean i wouldn't say enjoy i think come and see is like I think it's just more impactful on me because it was awesome. you're seeing it. Like, was... Dude, that movie was so awesome. Because <laughs> it was a kid. The bard scene? Dude, oh the bard man, scene? that kid's getting fucked up in war, man. That's so cool. No. Because, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you're like, that's happening to a kid, but this is happening to a man. But you see everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. A whole Mario, array of events. Mario, have you seen these... Uh, uh, Human Condition, I almost said come and see. The Human Condition trilogy? Or feels like you've heard of them, right? No, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll save it for a rainy day. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be like, oh, I feel like really bad. You know, let's, let's, let's. Put it <laughs> yeah. <on>. You're like, <laughs> I feel, feel like worse. sending myself to the shits. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's intimidating. I remember putting it off for a while, you know, um, but I, made I feel it. like it's, it, <laughs> you made, it was literally like the first thing you do when you moved in with me. You're like, you're watching this and you get you like handed me you're like i'm going to work you're gonna watch all these i was like all right <laughs> um, but yeah just just prepare yourself mm-hmm. but it it's very rewarding once you get through it because you're like wow first of all i was able to sit through all these movies second of all i'm able to like appreciate the journey mm-hmm. you know that i feel like mm. not a lot of people could do these days like i know someone who hated the third human condition film mm. and i'm like what what is wrong with you <laughs> why, I just why would think you hate it watching movies i don't know who knows um all right mario let's go with your craziest one okay to um this i think this will be since we, we've gone on for like a little over an hour let's talk about this one and then maybe just throw out some honorable mentions to wrap it up mm-hmm. if that's cool is that okay, okay. with you brandon that's fine that's fine all right me. Mario, what you got for us? What's this? What's this totally cheaty, insane one? I'm I'm ready to talk about. Okay, it. so I, I'm just gonna admit this is like more of an anthology, um, and it's also a a, a uh, two films. You, well, I don't know if you talked about the second one, but it, it's it's at least at the very least a film you've talked about on here because um, I actually mm-hmm. watched it. Uh, based on Stack's recommendation, I, I heard you guys talk about the movie, oh. and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I need to go out and see this." Um, La di da. And uh, so my my trilogy uh, is going to be Wong Kar Wai's Chunking Express and Fallen Angels. <laughs> That's the trilogy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. dude, <laughs> yes, yes, that is a trilogy. Yeah. It's just it's a trilogy within two films. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you are like you are being like the Chris replacement this episode. That is some shit he would have pulled too. I, I first of all talking about Wong Kar Wai, second of all talking talking about two films in a trilogy episode, Fast but it is a trilogy because yeah. it's three stories. There's three stories, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he actually was uh, he was the one who uh, replied to my review and he said, uh, "Did you know that Fallen Angels was supposed to be the third story?" And I was like, "Oh, that's interesting. I'll keep that in mind for when I go on Stack and talk about trilogies." So it's been planned for all of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. But... I'll keep that in mind when I replace you. <laughs> he planned this. No, no. I wish I did. That, that, would, that would make me sound... Uh, <laughs> well, that would make me sound insane, actually. Wow. But I... <laughs> Um, but i would appreciate the hustle <laughs> yeah it's because we're the first billion dollar podcast he has <laughs> to hustle true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you guys are signing right, well, a million dollar deal this. to get me on and all that um really excited <laughs> yeah a hello mario buyout actually we're gonna buy out your whole channel yeah that's a new home of podcast. we're only we're only gonna talk about knott's berry farm from now on actually sorry i need i need to go there one day i i can't believe i skipped that it's great i well i i know i know um it's anyways uh so movies what what was it yeah yeah <laughs> um chung king and fallen yeah, angels no, I, I i remember um but um <laughs> but yeah i i don't know um i think i watched fallen angels first um just because i, I was kind of making my mm. way through the one car Y stuff uh i had watched in the mood for love i enjoyed it but i 
um i don't know i think i i was i was just kind of out of it and i i wasn't fully feeling it um i still gave it an eight out of ten it's a, it's a really good movie but um i didn't quite feel it as much as other people did um fallen angels i also gave an eight out of ten um i think i prefer it to in the mood for love it's the cinematography the story just um the the way Wong Kar Wai shoots like I, I I don't know it's it's such a unique style and it's so yeah like fitting for his movies and I I just you know grew uh, grew uh, whatever grew in love with it what is what is it saying why can't I remember it fell <laughs> fell, in, fell love. in love with it that's the one <laughs> yeah grew in love um uh, yeah it just grew it just grew on me and i fell in love with it there you go um there you go and I, I think it, it really just prepped me for chunking express um and i i was worried i i wouldn't like it but again i i heard the podcast i heard you guys talking about it and um yeah i i don't know i love this movie um it's near a 10 out of 10 for me which i i don't know if you guys have seen my letterbox i have i believe 17 10 out of 10s out of the 946 Holy films shit. I've watched. um i thought and i thought i was picky because i only have like yeah, 80 yeah and and, t- oh and two God. of them are probably on the cutting the cutting block because i think la la land is probably a nine and then i haven't watched her in a very long time and i rewatched <laughs> the original spider verse i finally gave it a 10 and now i'm thinking about going back on it because i watched the new one <laughs> really and i i think there's stuff that the new one does better I, okay i'm getting way off track but regardless um yeah <laughs> yeah let's go back one car white I, he's a very all over place director yeah he, yeah I, I, I'm, I I'm capturing I it. it um so yeah i i don't yeah. know just this movie i i loved both of the stories i i i don't know what it was it wasn't even like it it like I don't know because there's there's um usually when i i fall in love with a movie i'm just like i love this concept i i love the story they're trying to tell but it was just something about it where i was like sucked into it the the whole way through um the style of it was so good um and i i can't explain why i like it so much like a lot of my 10 out of 10s i can explain like whiplash i think it's just just crazy editing just you know really great story about um you know whatever i'm getting off track again um but it, mm-hmm. you know it, it it's just <laughs> there's something about this movie that i i watched it and it was in my head for so long that it kept climbing up my rankings i believe it's now a top 20 film for me it's so so good i i i love it very yeah. much uh fallen angels i i also very much enjoy i i want to rewatch it eventually but um I mean, it's a great movie too, um, and yeah, I don't know. I just it, it's it became an all timer for me. So yeah, I well, I, I mean, I've told this story on stacked enough of my relationship with Chunky Express. How mm. you know when I was oh I watched in freshman year, hated it, thought it was so annoying, didn't get it, then rewatched it earlier this year. And I was like, wait a minute, this is one of the greatest movies ever yeah. made. I was dumb as shit back then. Um, but it, it, it is hard to talk about, like, why why it, why does this work so well, mm-hmm. you know? Because Wong Kar Wai breaks so many rules in these two films. And for me, I feel like, um, first of all, it just, it talks about um, sort of like this weird thing in life that we can't really explain of like how people cross paths how lives intertwine and um how relationships can be made through that you know and so you know chunking express it's two separate stories it's a bifractured narrative um and but then you'll occasionally see characters from each of these stories like exist in the same places Mm -hmm. as characters from the next which makes which makes it all the more rewatchable you know because then you'll see like um when the lady in the blonde wig is like shopping at a store you'll see the woman who worked at chunky express carrying that big plush garfield oh i had no idea you know i i I didn't yeah you'll see her you'll see her carrying it walking down the street Mm -hmm. you know and then of course later in the second story you'll see the uh the detective come to the chunky and express you know i um, i think the mcdonald's is in both of these movies as well right there's there's like that one like underground i don't know if you know it, it was just very visually striking right. there's like a mcdonald's that's underground kind of i'm pretty sure it's in both um but i might be wrong 
I, I think so. I know it's definitely in Fallen Angels. Yeah, um, I, I was pretty sure it was in yeah. Chunking briefly. Um, I think the second story, but I'm not 100%. Bleh, I'm not 100% could, sure. I, I gotta re- I, I gotta rewatch yeah. it. Even though I just, I've already watched Chunking Express like three times this year. Yeah. I, I'm down to watch, rewatch it again. Because it's just like, and I just think what also makes those films so appealing is this, like, it's masterfully crafted, but it also feels so homemade like mm-hmm. it, it feels like there's just like more than any other film it feels like there's a human being behind the camera yeah like you can always feel that there's a human shooting this film like the relationship between what's behind the camera is what's in front of it is so important you know mm-hmm. and usually like that sort of meta narrative can get annoying you know or people can try to do something like that and it's just like it, it just becomes stupid, you know, mm. with like, I don't know, just fourth wall breaking is a very fine line, yeah. you know, but this one, it's like, it's very implicit, you know, it's like, it's not even mentioned. You're just like, when you watch this film, you're like, oh, I understand that like a human being made this mm-hmm. and he's trying to talk about love and life and how people yearn and how relationships come and go and uh how people just cross paths you know like one of my favorite lines is like this is like like the closest i ever got to this one person was brushing their shoulder mm. you know um and that's sort of how the sh- the story shift oh and yeah yeah it's it's just uh and then in fallen angels of course is the same thing but it's sort of like you know that film's also a bifractured narrative where you're following these two people yeah. but now and like the other two they actually come together at the end you know and that gives you sort of the satisfying conclusion to this trilogy, mm-hmm. you know, um, which is brilliant. Two the trilogy with the two films, like oh my god, brilliant, Brandon. You need to rewatch Chunking Express. I'm giving you, the, I'm giving you the the big hand right now towards this camera, boy. Get oh. your. Oh, he oh. left. He turned off. He's ashamed. He's ashamed. He's embarrassed that he hasn't rewatched Chunking. If I was given the big hand, Brain. I would do the same thing. I, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, Mario's given right. you the little peace sign in his logo. Just imagine it's really up close. You know, uh, rewatch Chunky Express, Brandon. You won't regret it. You, I don't. It's think good. So. It's just good. No, I don't know. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I loved In the Mood for Love. I really liked Fallen Angels. That and I one, was I need kind to rewatch. Of... I need to rewatch that too, because I, I think I'd like it more. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It just kind of didn't move me in any way or form. But when's the last time you watched it? Was the last time you watched it freshman year of college? That would be a... <laughs> six <laughs> years ago. You were a child when you watched that movie. You're... I was 18 years old. That is a years. baby. You were a baby boy. All right, <laughs> you need to. You have grown so much since then that you need to rewatch Thank that you. film and realize, you know, come on, you're rewatching your top stupid. 100. You realize that film tastes have an expiration date. You know, my Chunking Express, in terms of a movie that has climbed up the the ranks of my top 100, top 1,000, really in the past few years, is actually Walk Hard, a Dewey Cox story. So <laughs> that's my Chunking. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> I, Do you want to talk about that instead? Is that, is that a, is that I'm a not going to let you. I'm not going to let you. It's a, it's a trilogy within one film. I actually... Um, I, if, are we done talking about these or do we want to keep... Yeah, we can we can move okay. on. What do you want? Well, to bring up? I I want to bring up my other two cheats because they are one movie. <laughs> um, Let's hear them. So, Let's hear them. Uh, <laughs> Moonlight. Uh, t- it, I feel like that kind of gets. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's such a beautiful day. T- three short films um, put into one. Yes, film. agreed. Oh, yeah, a- amazing Great movie. movie. Yeah. Um, should I just list out all the all the trilogies I had written? Do okay. it. Okay, list your trilogies. Um, oh, I'll do the. Uh, let Let me do the real ones really quick. Uh, so the original Matrix okay. trilogy, I love one and two. Three sucks um three is very very bad. what do you I think like, of four what do you think of four's four? okay um i think the first act of four presents some really interesting ideas and then the rest mm. of the movie is is eh. i think the action is straight up bad <laughs> um i i really like i know i i know most do not like two i did not like two when i first I watched like it 
Um, but mm. I think in terms of action scenes, one of the greatest action movies ever made. Uh, the story is ridiculous, nonsensical, yes. Um, but I'll be honest, in terms of like watching the movie, I'd, I'd need to rewatch. But I think I almost might prefer the second over the first, which is a, a sin, I know. But wow. yeah, I well, I mean that that highway action sequence is probably the all, best action sequence all in of all them. of the Matrix. Yeah, and and the the yeah. clones and the like the I I don't know I I just like that movie sticks out in my head and I hated it when I first watched it. Like I think I literally gave it a two out of ten, and now it's like a seven leaning on it. I eight. think that's what I gave it. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I, okay, you, maybe you I rated need to it lower it. than the third, which is unbelievable to me. The third is just nothing. <laughs> the third is like I fell nothing asleep movie. during the third. Oh, I, I wish, I wish that that movie okay. is, is I got, horrible. Um, I gotta rewatch it. Yeah, uh, but listen, listen more chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Lord of the Rings, I, I, you know, I, I, I can't remember enough yeah. to be able to talk about it fully, but I will say, uh, unpopular opinion, I do think uh, Two Towers is the best one. Uh, just because yeah, yeah you're not alone no, I, I know alone I, I think show. I remember you saying that yeah it, it's it's really that battle in the middle which I forget the name. Helm's Deep Helm's Deep that battle yeah one of the it's greatest battle. uh, movie battles ever made uh, it's so good and it's most it's a lot of practical yeah, which yeah. a lot of the Lord of the Rings movies are not practical yeah so it's just mm, it's and so I think the third is my least favorite from from memory. So it goes two, one, what? three. Yeah, oh. it's the worst one. My oh, girlfriend agrees. Yeah. She just watched the extended editions for the first time, and we she, the wow. the third one is too long. Yeah. No, and I love I love long movies. I think the it's final so bloated though. Is, is kind of weak compared to the oh, other yeah. stuff. I I don't know. Like I I thought it was like good, what? but like compared to the other yeah, battles in the agreed. movies, I don't know. It's still good. Like it felt so underwhelming. Yeah, I gave all of these movies a nine out of ten. Like they they are very very oh, close. Okay. <laughs> just, just for content, I, I do need to rewatch them because it's been years at this point. But um, and I'd like to watch the theatrical like cuts because them. um, my stepdad made me watch the full on director's cuts first, which I was annoyed oh, yeah. about because like I I wanted to watch you know like I want to watch the theatrical version and then the full length, but whatever. Um. Yeah, that's my take on those. Uh, I wrote down Cornetto. We talked about that one. I also wrote down the Kung Fu Panda trilogy because uh, the first one is a great movie. First one is so good. Yeah, I, I rewatch it and, and I'm like, this is like one of my favorite animated movies ever. Um, yeah, and then the second one's pretty good, and the third one's just like, eh. it's eh. yeah, yeah, uh, which is why I didn't I didn't really mention it. And then uh, the final mm-hmm. two for the for my semi cheats. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, Toy Story two through four. I feel like have this kind of yes. like narrative. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Four is my favorite. I rewatched all the Pixar movies recently, what? and I really like four. Um, what the yeah? Fuck? yeah. I, I I don't know. Wow. I, I was really surprised about it. I think the Key and Peel characters are. I love Mario. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I I think the Key and Peel <laughs> characters got a little annoying and like weren't fully necessary. Oh, th- that's my favorite part. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. There, there were some good bits so in there, but the, like. I think some of the characters were a little unnecessary, but I think because um, I I like three, I don't love three. It's definitely my least favorite, um, which is a hot take. Wow. Yeah. Um, but three, I feel like it's like it it's really trying hard to be emotional, and I feel like four didn't have to try hard. Like it just it it felt it just yeah, was yeah, and it it just felt like it flowed better, and and three was just kind of like mostly a um prison break movie which was like solid and then it's yeah. fun yeah i i i so i don't know um and then john wick two through four just because those are my favorites and i i one is good but that is sort of the first one like they're the, the the trilogy like arc is there yeah through four. yeah and four That's is point. fucking incredible just an amazing movie it <laughs> it's it's crazy amazing all right brandon uh, you want to shout out some yeah uh mission impossible four through six i think macquarie's second macquarie and bread bird that's like okay. what the mission movies are the first three are like this hodgepodge of like what directors think they can do with the and i love that and i wish they kind of continued that yeah. to a certain extent like the fast movies but what can you do uh back to the future my favorite trilogy of all time really uh I I just think still haven't seen three. Zemeckis how? 
Well, I you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be saying anything because I still haven't seen Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. So whatever. Yeah, oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, what's more iconic? Yeah. Back to the Future Three or the Good, yeah. the Bad, and the Ugly? Back to the Future yeah, Three. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought I just I love these movies, and if I was like Bob Gale and uh, Robert Zemeckis wrote like a very perfect arc for Marty McFly because he often gets like. This is the biggest criticism of the first Back to the Future is Marty has no arc. Mm. And I'm like, okay, but watch the whole trilogy. And he has like a great arc in terms of like how it goes. And it feels like it was all planned, even though it wasn't. Uh, that's a great compliment I can give it. You can go with the original Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, I don't like the first half of Return of the Jedi, but the second oh. half is like awesome. So I need to rewatch uh, I could the Evil Dead trilogy, just a very... And I would honestly so go with good. two, two, three, and the remake. Two, three, and because rise. yeah, no, oh, no, the no, remake. the remake. Okay. Yeah, if I was to cheat, um, because I think they each present a different tone and style that is because like the first Evil Dead and the second Evil Dead are very similar, and mm-hmm. that's because of rights issues. So to like differentiate, I would go two, three, and the remake by well, Freddy Alvarez. The remake Alvarez. is also very similar too. Yeah, but I feel like in terms of tone, it's different. Like, you can have the That's first true. one, which kind of is mixed and taking itself serious, whereas the the thir- the remake takes itself seriously, and then you've got the silly one in the mm-hmm. middle. Yeah. Um, I would go with the original Born trilogy, so Born Identity, Bold, Su- Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum. Really good action movies, even though I hate Shaky Cam. I think it does do a really good job at, like, this, like, thriller narrative very not very like complex but very entertaining uh the, the first die hard the first three die hard movies are really good die hard with a vengeance is like one of my favorites um and then honestly i was going to talk about two through four that was going to be a my cheat so mario kind of stole that for toy story wow yeah okay. because i I, I just recently rewatched Toy Story 3 because it was in my top 100, and it's the only movie that I've watched in my top 100 that I don't think is going to stay. Oh, okay. Really? That might fall out of my top 250. Oh, yeah. Damn, I might have to rewatch these it's... Toy Story movies, too. I, I kind of want because, to. Because I, if I'm thinking back, right, it might be my least favorite. Oh, now. okay. I, ha- I, I haven't updated my rankings yet because I don't want to do that until I'm done with this whole project. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But, like, thinking of it in my head, it's still a really well-made movie. And I, I do think it's still, like, upper-tier Pixar mm-hmm. because of its homages to, like, Cool Hand Luke and Shawshank Redemption. But it almost feels, like, generic. Yeah. You know? You have this really great last scene. Mm-hmm. And I think that stays in people's minds too much when thinking about the movie. Because the rest of it's like, oh, it's really fun. But, like... I don't see it as like, oh, the Toy Story movies had to end this way just because Andy went to college. It's just, it's, and if it's about the characters that we actually followed, sorry, Andy, we didn't follow your life journey for the first two (laughs) Toy Stories anyway. But we followed them serving Andy. Serving? serving. Them serving. (laughs) Master, (laughs) we're here for you to play with us. (laughs) (laughs) That's where it's like, I, I kind of like... I'm starting to think like, well, it's like the least focused on them, actually, if you think about yeah. it. And really the first one's kind of generic, which makes me have this weird ranking right now in my head of four, two, one, three. I, that's which, my ranking. I don't that's know. My, that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that's my ranking. And two, two has always been my like least favorite. So I think, but like, no, just two, like so rewatching it and favorite. rethinking. I love two. Two's good. I think okay. two's the well, only. I still didn't two's love. my only one that I'd give five out of five. Mm. Yeah. And then I think the last two I want to mention are the Three Colors trilogy. I love white. Was... It's it's fun. I love red. And red is amazing. I love it's red. so good. It's so good. Uh, and then I would probably go with the Creed trilogy. Oh, yeah. I, that yeah, one's pretty yeah. good. I have that written down. Because. I just think a lot of people are sleeping on the third one because of the whole Jonathan Major situation and because Kugler didn't direct the second and third Mm -hmm. one, you know? And so people just kind of wrote them off. But I think they're still really good sports dramas. so good. 
and three is really like, good. Too. Surprising. I, yeah, yeah, so it's... I, I think one is the best, and they get progressively worse, but I will say I think the I third one is directed better than the second one. Like, I, I, I think uh, the directions are... In really terms better. of the fights, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I even think the dialogue... Like, there's that... I, really? Yeah, I, I don't know. There, there's that one scene. I, I forget what exactly, but there's like a doorway be- in between two characters, and I, I thought oh, that was just yeah. When it's Jonathan Majors mm-hmm. and uh, Michael B. Jordan, the, yeah. But that, I think that's, the, that's a really good. Show. I, I think the stuff with his daughter and like the subtext about him getting abused is just sort of like, it's so like unexpected from a franchise that, no offense to my Rocky lover in the room. Uh, that doesn't take itself seriously and is sort of generic. Every installment sort of feels the same after a while. But they're good. <laughs> I don't care. I'm, I'm going to shout good. out the first three Rocky movies. I think that's a good trilogy right there. If you just wanted to watch the first three. Um, okay, those are some good ones. Here, let me shoot. Uh, I got to fire out some. Um, the P- Planet of the Apes prequel trilogy, I think that's one of the few trilogies where it gets better and better in each installment. Whereas, like... Uh, War for the Planet of the Apes is so good. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, of course, Man with No Name trilogy. Beautiful. Great. I already mentioned Indiana Jones, the first three. And those are like, in my mind, only those three exist, even though I don't like two. Yeah, two is it, it's, good. <laughs> Indiana Jones is so weird where it's like, I love Indiana Jones, but I only like two of the movies. <laughs> and I'm probably still only going to like two of the movies hearing I, what Dial of Destiny is about to watch. Be, but... um, I'm about to watch four, and I'm, I'm kind of dreading it. Not not tonight, but um, oh, probably man. within the Get next three days. Get ready for some Mutt Williams, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. I think that is the best superhero trilogy ever made. Uh, it is like... But I still think the first Star Wars trilogy might be my favorite trilogy of all time. But honestly, I could see Guardians of the Galaxy topping that. Just because I feel like the emotional like developments between the main characters through those three films are so good. Mm-hmm. Just like it's overall like narrative of acceptance where it's like the first two movies are accepting like where you came from and then the third one is accepting like just yourself as who you are, you know? Um, and that's more just for Star Lord, but he's always been my guy hmm. through the trilogy. I know people have been more Rocket and Raccoon people. Um, let's see some other ones. Yeah, Three Colors. Uh, Robocop. No, not Robocop. Expendables. What? No, Expendables. shut up. Shut up. <laughs> there, there's one I'd be surprised um, if we don't mention. Uh, that's another superhero trilogy that is a. I I I was gonna mention Ant Man, hmm. but I don't know. Uh, I. I personally love those films. I can totally see why people like, why people wouldn't say like, what the? Why is that one of the best superhero trilogies? I I just I'm a Scott Lang guy. Yeah, he's always America. been he's always been my boy. Um, and uh, I do I do think there is a good thematic element uh, with Scott Lang's relationship to time mm-hmm. between those three movies um, because it's always about him making up for lost time, and then the third movie is sort of like a literal interpretation of that, yeah. but. I can see why people hate the third one I, and don't really care. I, the I do one. feel bad that I don't like any of those three movies. I I, I, I rewatched I, them. I was like, maybe I don't maybe care. it'll maybe it'll happen, and it didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, nah. I and I get why people hate those movies too, or like yeah, I, I don't hate fine. the first two. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, but I get it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Um, I would say the first three Hellraiser movies are like the only Hellraiser movies you need to watch. The first two are good. Third one is like kind of trashy, but it's kind of cool. Um, the rest of them suck ass, except for the new one. Um, let me see if there's any more that I want to shout out. The Bad Boys trilogy? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that one is so good. Get out of here. Um, I love Get that. Bad Boys 2 is like amazing. Um, it's the only good Despicable one. Me anywhere on there? <laughs> me? well you know you can't talk about despicable me without the minions so i'm like is that really true see I, you know it, it's like you know you're gonna have the trolls trilogy soon the, third one the avatar so trilogy bad. like it looks like a straight to dvd <laughs> that it, they just read it does it literally like, does i don't know I, I i keep seeing the trailer for that because i keep watching animated movies in theaters um and yeah it just does not look very good <laughs> sounds um, like a mistake I think that might be. I think we covered all the ones I want to talk about. I guess the Captain America trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, no, those ones are good. Um, 
but alien. Have, I feel like they have their faults, you know. I I can they, they they used to be held up as the standard, but now I feel like they've just they sort of just dropped. I you know I know we're running um, very long, but I'll just list off a few more I had written down. Yeah, uh, go for it. Cars. <laughs> uh spongebob cars movies. cars yeah, i had cars written not that i'd like it i, I actually don't like any of oh that they are trilogies yeah yeah i'm just i'm just i'm just <laughs> listing out trilogies spongebob i haven't seen the third one i've heard it isn't very good um yeah let's see uh spider-man there's two Ooh. of those yeah yeah two spider-mans i would say the original planet of the apes the first three films mm. is a crazy weird like time travel time warpy <laughs> trilogy because it's like the first one is like it's its own film and the second one something happens where you're just like what how is there how can there be more planet of the apes films and then the third one is like it's a time travel film where it's sort of like makes everything come full circle so it's like times of circle it's just like what but then the other ones kind of suck hmm. um but the, they're weird ass 60s 70s science fiction films um I think the only yeah, other runs I, think... I have are like Thor and How to Train Your Dragon. I don't even like the How. I like the first oh. How to Train Your Dragon, but not the second and third. Uh, Ocean's Eleven. That trilogy sucks. Mm. Uh, just watch. <laughs> this is supposed to be good <laughs> trilogies, guys. You're talking about ones you don't even like. <laughs> let us let us recommend bad trilogies. Um, fucking Spickle Me. Um, no, that's the only one I <laughs> the think. The Blade. Uh, high, uh, high school the, uh, musical, uh, the no. Jurassic World. Um, oh, that yeah, that that. that, 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 that. <laughs> I think the Jurassic Park uh, trilogy. Oh uh, God, we need to. But the, the first Jurassic Park is very good, and then the the other two are bad. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, we need to wrap this yeah. up. I, I'm gonna. I gotta actually. I have to bounce. I'm gonna see Past Lives. In oh hour. fuck! I'm, so I'm seeing it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I have to drive like an I'm hour seeing, to go see it. Yeah. Oh, is it, nah. has your AMC closed already? Uh, yes, it, it did close. Um, that Fuck. that's not the reason. Why, well, it kind of is, but like you know, they say playing in theaters everywhere, and they they mean uh, oh yeah, an hour away from me. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna see the new Wes well, Anderson and Past Lives tomorrow, and I'm very excited. Very excited. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's it. It, it is a this this summer has been packed for movies. Yeah. I'm, and, and awful I, picked, I picked the wrong summer to always be out of town um yeah. because yeah I, i'm gonna see past lives elemental um and then i feel like there's like even more uh that i want to watch i want to go blackening see the, i want i actually want to see the blackening um i thought I the trailer looked okay I, I heard i heard no hard feelings is like a good like return to raunchy comedy which i'm like i'm all down for <laughs> my um, dad texted so I'll probably me if he try wanted to see, those. to see that with me and i'm like i i guess <laughs> <laughs> ah a good father son movie yeah. um all right but let's let's wrap this up um i'd like to thank our very special guest this was an amazing episode hello mario you were a gift to have on the show and talk about trilogies um oh a gift y- yeah he was a gift. Not. wrapped up in a little bow. brandon i don't need i don't need to express how much of a gift you are because <laughs> i do it every day <laughs> with our friendship i haven't i, um, I haven't not talked to you in forever <laughs> <laughs> we, well, I, this is like the first time we've talked like three months what are you talking about no um mario what what would you like to plug what would you like me to put in the description below is there anything you want to plug for yourself um you should plug us <laughs> yeah it, look, put, the, put the stacked uh, <laughs> podcast in the description please um it, it not, already was going not, not enough people listening to that podcast nowadays and i feel like this episode it's, on the stack podcast it's actually true that's cool. <laughs> that's true yeah. Can we, a, 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 if we have any uh people who also like love hello mario's channel and the florida coasters also, also love movies just come our way you know yeah it'd be nice huh? I, I i mean you could you could put my channel in there but I, I i don't know how many people are like oh yeah i love florida theme parks and also love movies um so i don't know but if, if you'd like then there you go um yeah i will i'll put your letterbox too you make you write good reviews oh yeah um, i i just started writing actual reviews instead of like twitter for <laughs> movies so twitter for movies yeah. that's true but yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Brandon, 
thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> um, oh, my like, pleasure. And, um, my busy schedule. On the show today. I'd like to. <laughs> oh shit! We forgot to get his favorite trilogy. Uh, Green Cumulon, would you like to say a few words? Yes, I would. I have a word or two to say. 